how long the vector is. It represents you know, like how much force is being exerted. The larger the magnitude, the larger the force, for example. So here we've got two points. I've drawn the vector from the initial point to the terminal point. Again, we did in a previous video how to find the component form. You take the terminal minus initial, so 4 minus 1, which is 3, 5 minus 1, which is 4, okay, triangular brackets. But if we want to find the magnitude represented by the length of the vector, okay, also denoted by these bars right here, this represents the magnitude of this vector. We'll just call it vector v, okay. What you do is you take this x component, you square it. You take the y component, you square it. You add them together and you take the square root and that'll give you the length of the vector. So in this case we have 3 squared plus 4 squared. Take the square root, we get 9 plus 16 is 25. The square root of 25 equals 5. And you can see this is just based on the Pythagorean theorem. If you make this into a right triangle, this distance is, let's see, 3. This distance here is 4. There's your right angle there. And you're just doing your Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But some students like to have a formula here to work with. And so what you can do is you can just think of squaring the x component, squaring the y component of the vector, adding them together, and taking the square root. And that'll give you the magnitude, again, represented by these, these bars here around the, uh, the vector. Sometimes some books will use two bars like that. So that just represents the magnitude. So this has been a little video about how to find the a component form of a, a vector, and then this is the magnitude of a vector, and uh, we'll talk about some other aspects of vectors in the next uh, few videos. See you in the next video.